Hey Community Line Church, this is Pastor Joe just checking in with you in our latest video blog. And in my private time with God, I've been reading in Romans. I want to share with you a verse that I came across this morning that's really impacted me today. I've kind of been carrying it with me, and I thought I would share with you. So this morning I was reading in Romans chapter 12, and I came across this verse in verse 12 of Romans 12. It, Paul writes this. He says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. I just want to talk about those three things just for a couple minutes. First thing he says is rejoice in hope. The NIV translates, translates it, be joyful in hope. Paul's actually talking about something he wrote a few chapters earlier back in chapter 5 when he said, rejoice in afflictions because afflictions produce endurance and endurance produces proven character and proven character produces hope. In other words, he's saying, when you face an affliction, when you face a difficulty or a crisis in your life, you can actually have a little bit of hope because you know that in that difficulty, God is going to grow you into the person that he wants you to be. It's kind of like an athlete. Have you ever passed someone maybe running out on the road and in cold weather or, or in the rain and you've thought to yourself, why on the earth would a person be out there training right now? Well, well, a good athlete will go out and train no matter the difficulty, no matter the cost, because they have a hope that if they go through difficulty, then one day when the game happens, when the race happens, they will be successful. And that's what Paul is saying to you. When you face a difficulty in your life, there's actually a part of you that should rejoice. Because you know that in that difficulty, you can have hope that God will take you through to the other side of it, and he'll actually grow you into more of the person that he wants you to be. The second thing he says is be patient in tribulation. I, I can't speak for you, but I, I feel like in my own life, I could use a little bit of patience. You know, the stresses of this coronavirus situation seem to mount every single day. And, and, and the problems that you solve today and the solutions that you come up with today won't be the answers to the questions of tomorrow. So with things changing every day, it just is difficult to be patient. My patience is wearing a little bit thin. Maybe yours is too. And Paul is saying that in difficulties, you're going to tend to become impatient. But that's when you need to be even more patient. So I just want to challenge you. How can you be patient? Maybe it's patience with your kids. That's an area for me that gets a little bit tough. When I'm stressed, I find that it's my kids that I am the most impatient with, that I can become short with them. But I've had to realize that this situation has been tough on them as well. They've been cooped up in my house for over 10 days now. And, and, and maybe you realize this, I, I don't know if you do, that even if your kids don't show it, they can tell that mom and dad are a little bit worried right now. And they're a little bit worried too. So have some patience with your kids. Or maybe it's your coworkers. You've been working through this and changing gears and shifting so quickly and, and, and tensions are a little bit high. As you look at your coworkers that might be just bothering you a little bit more than normal, just remember they're facing the same challenges that you are. And they probably have even some challenges in their life that you're not even aware of. So have some patience with them. Or for you, maybe it's that person that you see out in public, out, out of the grocery store. You're looking in their cart and you're thinking, do you really need that much milk? Do you really need three loaves of bread? Just remember, in our society, we're engaging people that don't have the same faith that we do. So have patience with them. They're scared. And remember, we're not depending on Giant Eagle or Walmart to provide for us. We're depending on a God who has promised to always be there to provide for us. So when others are grabbing what they think they need, just that, let it be a reminder to you to be patient with them and to, turn toward the God who promises to provide everything that you need. Or, or maybe for you, it's that person on Facebook that writes those annoying comments. They always have something to say about everything. Be patient with them. You don't need to respond. You don't need to make fun of them to someone else. In fact, just keep scrolling on down. Be patient with them and let their comment disappear. And here's the biggest one. I just want to challenge you with. This has been on my heart. Be patient with those in leadership over us. Whether it's the people that run the company that you work for or your boss or community organization leaders or school administration or government even. Our governor, our congress, our president. president. Be patient with them. You know, they're facing things that no one ever has had to face before, making very, very difficult decisions. And do their decisions impact us? Oh, absolutely. They impact all of us. 
And are they making decisions that maybe if they had more time to think about or to think through all the ramifications, they would decide differently? Absolutely. But they don't have the luxury of having years or months or weeks or sometimes even days to make these decisions. And they're not making decisions just for me and just for you. They're making decisions for everyone that is under their responsibility. So be patient with them and appreciate the fact that they're facing complexities that most of us will never have to have to face. The third thing that Paul says is to be constant in prayer. It's almost like he reads your minds. He said, how can we be rejoicing in hope? And, and how can we be patient in tribulation? And Paul says, here's the answer. You've got to be constant in prayer. What's your prayer life been like through this situation? You know, what does it mean to be constant in prayer? Does it mean locking yourself in a closet and praying for 12 hours? You can do that. No one will stop you. But here's what I really think it means. I think it means in your everyday moments of your life, having an attitude of prayer. Talking to God about the conversations that you have, the decisions that you make, and even the frustrations that pop up. I think it also can mean taking a walk, getting outside, taking a break from what you're in. Maybe it means going upstairs and shutting the bedroom door, or going out to your car and shutting the door and spending a little bit of time just recentering and refocusing on God. It might even mean reaching out to pray for someone else. You might think, well, I'm not really good at praying out loud. Well, I've got good news for you. Jesus, in some of the conversations he had, really pointed out that long, windy prayers annoy God. So just pray a short prayer for someone else, and I promise you, the fact that you care enough about them to reach out and pray for them will be so much more important to them than the fact that you might not have the prettiest words to pray. So that's what's been on my mind. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, constant in prayer. I know God's been speaking to my heart through this verse that Paul gives us. I hope he's spoken to yours. I want to let you know we miss you. We're praying for you. We can't wait to see you again.